Now, let us uh, finish the introductory report and move on to the body of our workshop. And uh, with this, I would like to pass the microphone to Ludmila Pankova, Professor of uh, Dietology and GI Chair from the Northwest Medical University of St. Petersburg. She will talk about the modern standards of the differential diagnosis of pancreatic diseases. Dear panel members, and dear colleagues, it is very difficult to be the first speaker in a surgical type of audience, but it's difficult to speak from the viewpoint of an internalist. We, GI internalists, Excuse me. I don't know how to switch the slides. Can you help me with that? This is wonderful. We, being eternalists and, uh, well, surgeons as well, we are in sort of illusion or an optical type of um, illusion. He is not um, walking along the, um, along the void but along the embankment. This is just the optical illusion. It's the reflection of the cliffs that he will have to uh, uh, come over. And generally speaking, at the moment, we, of course, are in the field of illusion because we cannot discuss all the problems of chronic pancreatitis or chronic diseases or of the pancreas disorders because there is no single classification of diseases of pancreas. They are so multiple, and we shall just uh, have a very, br very brief overview, and we shall speak about the uh, questions of dispute that usually are disputable both for GI specialists and for surgeons. If you look at the ICD-10 classification, you will see that there is a very clear subdivision into acute and chronic pancreatitis, but further on, there is the so-called borderline or gray zone, which uh, sets great deal of confusion. That means other, um, other uh, cl just classified disorders. And here, the di diagnostic issues come to the forefront. And, but we should not forget that there is another huge group of dis pancreas dis diseases, which we come across um, as secondary lesions or secondary disorders, but sometimes the disease of the pancreas is um, first, not as a primary, not secondary. And also there is a huge uh, gray zone which uh, needs joint efforts of a surgeon and a journalist and sometimes a pediatrician. If we speak about the standards that we have in our hands, there are more than 29 at the moment. So that is why shouldering such a um, responsibility to analyze them in front of this audience is just unnecessary. Those who work with this pathology are aware of these guidelines. But I would like to give you an account of the method which allows you to assess all the symptoms in the online uh, mode. And thus we can detect the acute pancreatitis um, patients. All these tests are available online, and step by step you can do something. But uh, experienced doctors, they have this algorithm in their heads already, in their minds. Look how many guidelines this ADAPT system is based upon. Now, we are discussing a lot of confusing issues. Um, and first of all, we uh, speak about enzyme diagnostics, uh, we, uh, where we discuss the uh, enzyme activity, etiology, something that we should be very um, precise about. If we speak about acute pancreatitis, then we have a great deal of dispute in different guidelines. And at the moment, we need to, first of all, assess what we have by the year 2013. 
because up to the year 2013, for 20 years in a row, we have been constantly revising our standards. But if you look at these standards, and if you give it a close look, you will see that um, nothing changed uh, has been changed in this content. The acute pancreatitis, or mild acute, or more than it is severe acute pancreatitis, was also introduced, and also the transient organ failure uh, was, or persistent organ failure was prolonged up to 48 hours. But mainly, we definitely um, should rely on the experience of those specialists who wor worked before us. Then, Mannheim classification doesn't allow us to work. I mean, the practical uh, doctor cannot rely on this abbreviation. Uh, we can assess the etiology, and uh, we uh, should make some conclusions on the basis of this classification. Another classification, the Russian GI uh, Association, is still working on these guidelines. It's still a project, but if you come to read them, and if you want uh, to have some clarification or to make a comment, you can make it on the site of um, the Russian uh, Gastroenterological Society. You can see here all the criteria, the clinical signs and symptoms, methods of diagnostics, and all the situations within which these diagnostic modalities are important for the uh, choice of uh, treatment. And certain epidemiology data for Russia. Nowadays, we have more integral data. So to say, we can say that epi epidemiology in Russia, according to the studies, shows much higher morbidity than in Europe. It's uh, very difficult to say whether this data is really true, but at the moment, it's official data. The primary detected cases of chronic pancreatitis is increasing from 5 to 23 cases per year. The age range is not uh, has not changed. It's uh, the age group between 35 and 50. That means working population. What is important that the gender um, range changes. Uh, there are more females, and that is something that definitely changes our diagnostic and treatment approaches. And uh, mortality is not so high in 20 years, about 50%. But in 20 years, it's not only chronic pancreatitis, but there must be comorbidities that also take part, some um, concomitant diseases. But if you calculate it for sure that um, the mortality happens because, or lateral outcomes happens because of the progression of chronic pancreatitis or complications related to it, then it's uh, clear that uh, complications due to CP exacerbation account for only 15 to 20 percent, but the secondary digestive disorders and infections complications range between 60 and 75 percent. But we, as internalists and GI specialists, should understand that if we see a focal disorder, we should definitely start uh, worry, and um, we should think about the substrate. Of late, great uh, attention is paid to autoimmune pancreatitis. Why I'm not going to read all this? I'm not going to read all these definitions out to you, because every year um, a club of pancreatologists have their annual meetings, and they devise some new definition. But the last definition, which was adopted and it was never revised, it is uh, stated here at the bottom of the slide. It includes the following. It's uh, obstructive jaundice, verified on histology, periductal infiltration, and uh, also the therapeutic um, response to corticosteroids. All these aspects result in a great number of um, questions and dispute in terms of certain um, application of certain treatment modalities, such as um, uh, pharmaceutical or sorry, uh, such as uh, uh, the application of certain uh, drugs. If you look at the epidemiology, the predominant population are male gender over 40. If you look at the very first uh, adopted criteria of autoimmune pancreatitis uh, or AIP, uh, they were very clear. 
even the length of structure um, of the pancreas was this, uh, this uh, discussed and uh, different antibodies. Um, but at the same time, we were not discussing the uh, immunoglobulin G4. And subsequently, we resulted in a great number of mistakes, but only after we accumulated certain experience in 2006, we resulted in criteria, which I'm demonstrating at the moment, which will uh, remind you of any criteria of rheumatic pathology. There are four cr uh, criteria all in all, and uh, we take one of them as basic. Uh, this is the... Uh, instrumental findings and the old lab findings and the, uh, now you calculate all the, the other three. This is the diffuse enlargement of the pancreas, elevated uh, immunoglobulin 4 and the quite typical uh, signs of histology. And then you can diagnose AIP. This is not a surgical type of situation. If we have first criterion and fourth, and plus to that, we have a response to glucocorticoids, then it's probable AIP, but we should definitely consider the oncology, oncological pathology as well. And uh, if there is only one criteria, then you, uh, that matches, then you should uh, consider the situation further on. Now at Pancreatologist Club, we also classify type 1 and 2 of AIP, and these situations are different, because type 1 is systemic disorder uh, as part of uh, immunoglobulinopathy, and the second one is um, uh, idiopathic ductal um, concentric pancreatitis and the ductal uh, pancreatitis with granulocytic epithelial injuries. We should understand first and foremost that we do not have any serological markers and we do not have good response to glucocorticoidal uh, corticoids and uh, we do not have a sufficient uh, number of Ig uh, G4 uh, cells. Uh, from the viewpoint of autoimmune pathology, uh, every fourth uh, of the patient has also comorbidity with ulcerous colitis. Uh, another very important aspect which is applied everywhere is diagnostic criteria of AIP according to his old uh, system. So that means the main histology aspect is IgG4 uh, positive cells over 10 in age, uh, PF, PF, enlarged pancreas, accumulation of the contrast, uh, um, or rim accumulation of the contrast, and uh, uh, other important markers are serological, so that means IgG4 elevation over 140 milligram per cent. Uh, the myoclinic says uh, twofold. Japanese authors or Japanese consensus says that uh, over threefold, but nonetheless, it's, it should be over 140. Uh, that's uh, that would correspond to AIP, and also we should take into account uh, comorbidities and uh, lesions in other organs and the response to glucocorticoid therapy. Uh, we can also verify the diagnosis when we have verification on histology. That means very high um, uh, verification. And we, if we also have lab and instrumental verifications, that would be verification of B class. And also if we have positive uh, steroid response, then it's uh, probable. AIP. If we speak about uh, sclerotic disease, then Karina Leyedovna will continue after me. But nonetheless, uh, autoimmune pancreatitis should be considered first and foremost. Why is this so important for us? For the slides. I cannot switch the slides, I'm sorry. So, But nonetheless, we should understand first and foremost that in important uh, deep diagnostic approach uh, will uh, help us to, to 
choose the, the treatment further on. Whether we diagnose the patient fast and uh, send the patient for surgery or we start um, medication treatment. And if we revise all the tissues, when we revised all the tissues which we received after surgery of the um, pancreatic uh, cancer, in uh, a great number of cases we verified AIP. So very important diagnostic criteria are uh, elevated levels of uh, IgG and other anti-nuclear and ASM antibodies. This is a HLA specific haplotype, then hyper and gamma globulinemia, and the level of IgG4 is most important. Also, the level of CA199, AIP should not should not surpass 40 units uh, per milliliter, and the imaging specific imaging methods. That's very important, but uh, only few specialists at the moment are capable of doing that. What difficulties do we come across? First of all, when such patient comes to uh, us, we should understand that the diagnosis of AIP is less common than adenocarcinoma of the um, pancreas and cholangiocarcinoma. Then, uh, elevate, uh, elevated levels of IgG4 to, is it specific? 5% of patients can uh, have elevated levels even without disease of the pancreas. 10% of the patients with pancreatic cancer also will show elevated IgG4 levels. And the uh, chronic pancreatitis without autoimmune uh, disorder uh, will also have elevated IgG4 in 6% of the cases. And uh, 5%, that means five people. So percent means actually uh, just um, statistics. But five people, that means five real life patients who will look in, into our eyes and come to us uh, for treatment. So that means we should assess this marker, but we should understand its specificity. And also oncology patients very frequently have um, a reduction of IgG in um, glucocorticoid therapy. Yes, every case should uh, should be considered individually. More to that, very frequently oncology patients can also show very good subjective clinical response in, uh, for, on glucocorticoids, and we should definitely take this into account, especially if we consider the diff diagnostics. And quite naturally, if our patient is uh, does not respond to the test glucocorticoid treatment within two weeks, AIP should be excluded. Then, what anomalies do we come across? So, what, what spheres? Uh, who should be responsible for this? Um, uh, pediatrician, uh, an internalist, a surgeon. Uh, so, first of all, up to the age of, uh, if we speak about pediatric patients, then uh, they do not live up to the age of 10. And if we speak about annual annular pancreas. It uh, gives us a lot of trouble and a lot of challenge because the clinical manifestations are very few. But when the situation grows into the age of 40, 45, this annular pancreas can lead to obstructions and can also result in a very, uh, in a very manifested um, symptoms of fibrosis and the, before that the patient can tell you that he uh, never had any uh, congenital disorders uh, because uh, he never had any manifestations before the age of 40 45 uh, but in fact we have about uh, 40 cases primarily dis uh, discussed in literature then uh, further on in the recent 20 um, years we have about 600 cases, and now these cases are many more. Uh, and we should consider whether surgical intervention is needed or whether these patients should be followed up. Next group of patients are uh, patients with a diffuse connective tissue diseases. Very frequently, in the onset of systemic 
uh, of um, systemic uh, lumpus. Uh, a patient comes to uh, is uh, hospitalized and AIP is uh, diagnosed, although it is related to the lumpus and which uh, is manifested with the uh, pancreatic infarctions. And very frequently, these infarctions and thrombotic events in the diffuse um, in the diffuse type of um, pancreatitis do not lead to the serious um, polyorgan complications. And quite naturally, we should think about uh, whether it is acute pancreatitis or whether it is relapsing pancreatitis is related to certain restricted form of connective tissue disorder. I wanted to make a conclusion and to say that the modern standards of diagnostics of the, and the diagnostics of pancreatic diseases are multiple. And we have complex guidelines with the, including the dose and um, antibiotic treatment. We also have guidelines on quite, and which are quite particular on the infusion treatments. We are going to listen to endoscopic imaging. All these are separate guidelines. And it would be very good if we could have a uh, wider look on our patients and um, to have a multidisciplinary approach. <coughs> Another very important uh, thing is histology. Histology, histological examination determines the tactics of um, our treatment. We can, of course, uh, take into account the lab data. But first and foremost, if we have certain doubts, we should rely on the histological examination. And uh, despite the fact from, uh, that from uh, starting from 2006, the uh, test glucocorticoid treatment is not a cornerstone, but nonetheless, it's quite disputable. And I would like us to discuss certain questions. Uh, so, like, for instance, in the right, in the upper right-hand corner, you can see two snakes, but in fact, this is a butterfly. And over there, uh, you can see uh, a road going to the, uh, which is going to leap into the void. But in fact, it's uh, just a turn over. So that demonstrates how many questions we have. But sometimes it's just an illusion that we have solutions to them. Thank you, Ludmila Konstantinovna. Please do not leave because maybe uh, there will be questions from the floor. The topic is very difficult. You have to digest it first. OK, maybe a little bit later on. Uh, me, myself, uh, being a surgeon, I, I uh, am greatly impressed by your talk because in uh, the problem of chronic pancreatitis, we have steroid treatment, and it's a surprise that uh, this is the disease that we would uh, expect to be treated with enzymes or just uh, drugs uh, which are classical for GI disorders. But steroid treatment has a, a very serious impact over the chronic pancreatitis. Another impression is that we speak about a histological or morphological verification of this disease. And uh, we have a stereotype, in fact, that this diagno uh, diagnosis can be done only by clinical examination and the manifestations, but uh, at the moment we have new opportunities, and today we shall look into all this and uh, look into the technical issues of clinical and uh, morphological, histological verification. So, in fact, uh, a lot is being changed, and of course we should be informed about the new trends in clinical uh, gastroenterology. So, maybe you would like to clarify something or to ask for more data. You're welcome. Uh, 
uh, I cannot hear the speaker because the microphone is not in use. Unfortunately, I unfortunately I cannot translate because the microphone is not in use. The booth must apologize. The microphone is not in use. The microphone is not in use. The interpreter cannot hear the speaker as the microphone is not in use. I must apologize. The mic is still not in use. Well, uh, at the moment, we are part of such an event where we'll have more questions than answers. Because if a pancreatic gland, its mass is uh, 60 to 70 gram, then of course, having adequate amount of material for morphology is quite problematic. And despite the fact that our uh, American clinic, um, uh, medical clinicians from Mayo Clinic, they rely on histological verification uh, main, uh, mainly, but they uh, speak about a fine needle biopsy. And you can understand that the volume of tissue is not enough. That's why immune histochemistry at the moment is discussed and the search of IgG4 positive cells in this uh, sample. So this is how we see histological verification of AIP. If we speak about some technical issues, I cannot uh, give you a competent answer because I am not um, a specialist in biopsy myself. And uh, I have had a talk with surgeons who would like also to be part of this discussion. But at the moment, I cannot give you a clearer answer to your question in terms of the method and uh, uh, just uh, sampling the uh, histological material. It's a brief question. How widely do you use biopsy in non-oncology, in non-tumor pathology of the pancreas? According to your experience and according to the experience of um, Moscow clinics and uh, leading clinics in St. Petersburg. I suppose that this method is not widely applied at the moment. In our routine traditional practice, we mainly rely on less aggressive, less invasive type of uh, diagnostic modalities. And we look at the IgG4 in uh, the serum. And we, look, we also use some imaging uh, techniques, which are not very aggressive, but the trend, as you see it at least, if you have such opportunity to have this diff diagn diagnostics, I, I think uh, only in disputable issues, not uh, only in certain cases where um, we need this aggressive approach because this intervention is definitely not, uh, should not be done on massive scale. Thank you.